Okay, so I just have an HTML boilerplate here. It's currently empty. So if we want a background image, you're gonna have to find an image. So I can I can go to unsplash.com. You can find all sorts of beautiful images. This is the one that I like. So I'm gonna copy the URL. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna create two elements actually. We're gonna create some kind of container element. And then in there, you could actually just use the image tag. It doesn't have to be a background image specifically with CSS. You can also just create an image tag here in HTML and style it like a background image. So that's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna paste the link here, the URL. And if we refresh now, this is what we have. Let's actually position this in the center. Um, so I'm actually just gonna add a very simple CSS reset, right? Because the browser adds some default styling to a lot of elements. We wanna start from a clean slate. So this is a very typical CSS reset. We're selecting all elements, removing all margin padding. And then typically we also set this line here. You don't really have to understand this. This is the most difficult property in CSS. A lot of people don't understand this. I have a separate video on that. Right, so then we have that weird space gone as well. And then we wanna center it so we can give the body the complete height and width of the viewport. The viewport is the visible area of the web page. It does not include the address bar. It's just the visible area of the web page. We want the body to make, we want the body to cover all of that so then we can center this container within that body so we can say minimum height of 100 percent of the of the viewport height so at least 100 percent could be more but then we get a scroll bar that's fine and the width will say actually 100 percent because if you use the viewport width unit it could get issues with with a scroll bar so then we want to center that so we can use flexbox actually it's the cleanest solution to center anything in css um so it's really important actually that if you work with the front end that you have mastered flexbox but also all sorts of other things in css so definitely check out my css course the link is in the description if you want to take it to a professional level okay so then let's see now it's in the center now what we want is when we hover this that it sort of increases right so we zoom in on it on a hover so let's see we have this image i could give it a class um, but I'll just select by tag for now. So what we can do is we can say image and actually in the hover state, so when we hover it, we can scale it up or down, right? So with transform, we can rotate elements, we can move elements, we can also scale them up or, up or down. Let's say we wanna make it 20% um, bigger. Now, when I go over here with my mouse, it becomes 20% bigger. Now, what we don't want is that it actually sort of increases its size, like its um, dimension. So. We want this container to have a certain uh, size and then everything that overflows should be hidden. All right, so maybe this container should have a size of 300 pixels of width and a height of 200 pixels. And then we're just gonna make the image 100% of the parent element, right? The image is the, is the child element of this container. So the image is gonna be whatever the size of the container is. So let's see. So now um, we have we're changing the height and width of an image. So typically it's a best practice to also include object fit cover. Okay, so it does it doesn't look ex uh, so uh, distorted anymore. And actually I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so you can see what we're doing. Okay, so we still have that hover effect. Now the trick here is to say that everything that overflows the container should be hidden. So we say overflow hidden, right? So then is, if the image becomes bigger than this size, it's going to be hidden, right? So now we we, we zoom in but it doesn't increase the dimensions, right? Now this is not very smooth, so we're gonna make it a transition, right? So this has to do with animations and transitions in CSS. This is also covered in my CSS course, right? So we can say any transition in this image should happen in let's say 0.3 seconds. Right, so now you get a nice smooth background image zoom effect when you hover the image. Now we can make it look even cooler. We can make it a bit darker initially. So we could say reduce the filter Right, the brightness should maybe be 80%, so it's a bit darker. And then when we hover it, the, the brightness becomes one again. Right, so let's see. Right, so now we get a very cool effect, right? Now, typically you also want to have maybe some text on top of it, so let's see how you could do that. So maybe um, some heading element with some text. So it's gonna it's gonna clash with the image now, or basically they're gonna compete for space uh, because this image is taking up space in this container. And we want the, we don't want that. We want to have other elements on top of it. So this image shouldn't be taking up space and from the other elements that are going to be in the container. So we can take it out of the normal flow, as it's called, by setting the position property to absolute. When you do that, you do have to set a uh, reference point, right? So what we're going to say is it should sit zero pixels from the top and zero pixels from the left. But zero pixels from the top of what exactly? So we're going to make this the reference point by setting position property to relative. Right, so now it's still taking up the entire space, it still works, but now it's not taking up any space anymore. Um, but now the heading is sitting 
behind the image, right? Because now they're going to be on top of each other and the browser has to decide which element out of these two gets to sit on top. And there are certain rules for that. The order of the HTML can matter, but also if they have the position property set, then they will be on top. Also the Z index. So here what we can say is Z index negative one. So it will sit below everything else. And actually when you do that, the problem that you're going to run into eventually, there's other problems as well, or this, there are other things that could cause the same problem, is that you lose the hover effect. So typically what you can also do is that whenever the user hovers this container, you can, you can do it differently. So the container in the hover state, then select the image in there, right? And you will get the same uh, result, right? And you, you won't run into issues here with uh, other elements being on top. Now, let's say we want to center this stuff in the center here. We can use Flexbox, right? To center something, the easiest way is Flexbox. Make sure you learn it. Right now, we have centered this. The text is a bit dark, and so maybe we should uh, decrease. Actually, let's just increase. Let's just make the text a bit brighter. Um, did I select it yet? No, not yet. So we say heading color white right and you can play around with that we can add a border radius as well let's see how we could do that because now it's a bit pointy right maybe like uh, six pixels container okay so now it's looking pretty good i think by the way if this was helpful i'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe also check out my courses on css and javascript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level because in there we will build some beautiful real world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master css or javascript and i will also release other courses soon like react and node.js so if you want to be notified then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter you can find the link in the description thanks for watching and i hope to see you soon